Okay, just ignore the mess in the background. It is what it is. All right, so I'm going to go in with my Hourglass Primer and just prime my face. I'm actually almost out of this, and so I just ordered a new one from Laura Mercier that I'm going to give a go. We'll see how that one pans out. I've been using this one for probably a good two maybe three years and I like it but I was just in the mood to try something else so I think that one's actually supposed to come in today and we'll see how that one goes over the weekend all right I have so much to do today and yet nothing to do at the same time when I get out and do something it feels like Oh my gosh, I'm so busy, but in reality, that's not that much. I'm going to do a Starbucks run. I'm going to stop by Target. I'll show you guys my Christmas decorations. I might have some wrapping to do, and I might have a Sephora order coming in today, and that's it. So, it is what it is. Okay, um, so for my foundation, this... Um, Tinted Moisturizer by NARS I have in the shade Alaska. It's too light for me right now. I don't know why I ordered it in this shade, but I did. Um, and then my favorite, which is the Giorgio Armani, this is the Luminous Silk Foundation. Uh, I have this in a 6.25. This one's too dark for me right now. So I've actually just been taking both and mixing them together. Let me tell you, um, there is a foundation that I absolutely now hate. Um, it is, <laughs> it's by Hourglass and I really wanted to like it, but it is this foundation stick. And I've had this one, this is in the color buff. I've had this one for a while and I put it aside and I didn't remember why I put it aside until I tried it earlier this week. And then I realized I truly did hate that um, foundation. It immediately started breaking up on me. My skin looked oily halfway through the day. It actually broke me out. And it was one of those foundations where at the end of the day, you just can't wait to get it off of your skin. Like I could not wait to wash my face. Um, and that's just not a good feeling for me. So I won't be repurchasing that one and put it on the back burner. Um, it's a bummer though, because that shade, um, buff was actually like a perfect match as opposed to me having to sit here and mix two together, but it's okay. And my Sephora shipment today, I ordered the NARS tinted moisturizer in a color similar to buff. Um, I love the Sephora website because you can actually go on there and use their shade finder and it'll compare uh, a shade that you already use and you know works to one that you're wanting to try out which is really convenient, especially right now, since you can't go into a Sephora and look at the samples and test it out. None of that's available with everything going on. So the shade finder is really ideal. Um, but yeah, so I ended up going with the NARS tinted moisturizer. And um, that's not normally one that I would use in the winter. Usually I go for a more full coverage. Um, the NARS one is typically one that I wear in the summer when I want something light, but the truth of the matter is I'm not really going out that much anymore. I do have a lot of meetings for work, so I do want something on my face, but I don't need it to be super heavy. It could be light and just make me feel like I'm in my natural skin, but you know, just a little bit better. So that's where we're at. Okay. Foundation is applied. This is the Charlotte Tilbury contour wand. So all I do is I apply it from about my piercing here down to about the corner of my eye in the direction toward my lip. So same thing, both sides. I also put a little bit um, at the top of my forehead and on the temples and then the last place that I put it is just along my jawline and my chin. And that's just going to give me a little bit more definition. I'm going to blend this out. Okay, so 
once I have that on, I'm going to go in with my uh, translucent powder. And the reason that I do this, and I'm going to do an extremely light layer of this, but I'm going to just go right over where I put the contour. And the reason is I'm going to go back over it with a bronzer and I just don't want it to get muddy. So you could see I'm barely taking any. I've tapped off the excess and I'm just going to lightly graze over this area here. Same on the other side. And it's a translucent powder, so it's not going to take away from what we've just done. It's not doing that. Um, it's just, like I said, it's giving us a little bit of a barrier in between so that when I layer my powders, they just don't get muddy and stick to that product. So now that I've done that, I'm going in with my tried and true Hula Benefit bronzer. You guys. Okay, I know I've had these makeup brushes for a while. I know I have. So this is, um, I think I've had this brush. Oh. I don't even know how long, but um, I think it's time for me to get a new one. This makes me sad, but that just happened. So it is what it is. All right, we're still we're still blending. Okay, my favorite blush is this one by Mac. This is Blush Baby. I'm gonna take a little bit of this. So I'm going to use that same translucent powder to kind of just sit here for a minute, and it's gonna clean all that up. Same on the other side. Okay, and then while I'm at it, I'm just gonna go in and kind of set everywhere else on my face where I kind of get oily, which would be really my T-zone. Okay, I'm gonna use this palette by Natasha Denona. This is the neutral, all neutral palette. Um, it's stunning. I absolutely have been obsessed with this one. Um, just, I mean, it's just a gorgeous neutral palette. This is your everyday go-to palette. Um, but this is a pricey palette and I did want to show you guys that you guys can create the same look with this one from e.l.f. This, I believe, was like $12. I picked it up at Target. Uh, this is their Rose Gold Sunset palette. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to go in with this color Tusk down in the bottom. If you were doing the same thing with the e.l.f. palette, you would go in with this light one right here. All right, and I'm just taking the Morphe R40 brush, looks like this, kind of big and fluffy, and we're just going to use that to apply Tusk to the lid. So you can see this isn't gonna give you much of a color payoff, um, but what I'm using it for is just as a base and to set a little bit of a difference in tone between my eyelids and the rest of my face. So again, it doesn't have to be perfect. We're just laying down a simple base. The next step that we are going to do is go in with this color here, which is Freckle. If you were using... Um, the e.l.f. palette, you would want to go in with this fourth shade right here. And all I'm going to do is I'm going to take the same, same brush, tap it in freckle, and we're going to apply it to the crease. All right. Now, we're going to switch up the brushes a little bit. There's only two more brushes, one more color, and we're good. So the next brush that I'm going in with is just a defined angle brush. And what I'm gonna do is I'm going to go in with this dark color down here, which is called Seed. 
if you were using the e.l.f. palette, you would go in with this dark color all the way down at the end. All right, so we're just gonna take seed and we're gonna apply it to the lash line. All right, so you can see, super easy. And then here's the thing, right? So that looks nice and clean. We want to mess that up a little bit. So the last thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take a little smudge brush. This is the Morphe by Jaclyn Hill. This is the JH42. Looks like this. Just a little smudge brush. And all I'm going to do is I'm going to go in and I'm going to literally smudge out over where I put that last uh, color. So as I do this, it's gonna give a little bit of like a smokier effect. That's it for the eye look. Okay, and then I'm going to go in with my new mascara, which I have been obsessed with and I'm so excited to tell you guys about. So this is the uh, Hourglass Unlocked Mascara and here's, okay, it goes on beautifully. I've got to tell you that the wand is the best type. I mean, look at that. It's tapered. It really gets in to like the corners of your eyes really well. It's not too fat that you can't use it on your lower lash line. This has been my go-to. The mascara itself is gorgeous. It applies beautifully to your lashes. It separates them, it elongates them. There's no flaking throughout the day, no transfer throughout the day. It is, I, I don't think I've ever been so excited about a mascara and, and this one is, is doing it. And the thing is that I, I'm completely obsessed with is how easy it is to remove it. I feel like whenever I remove mascara, I end up looking like a raccoon for a good five minutes while I'm trying to take it off. This is a game changer. So you literally just get your eyes wet, get your eyelashes wet. You do it while you're washing your face and then you use your fingers to just gently pinch and slide it off, it comes off. So I guess the easiest way for me to try to explain what it is like is almost like if you were peeling off a face mask, only it's not painful, no damage is done to your eyelashes, they all stay intact. It just peels off like a perfect little gel and that's it. It takes literally less than a minute for me to wash the mascara off of my eyes. It's, it's lovely. So anyways, I highly recommend this one. I don't remember how much it is. I will link it down below for any of you that are interested in it. It's bomb, it's great, I'm obsessed with it. Okay, for lips, I'm going to go in with Max Boldly Bear. I've been obsessed with this one lately. I feel like this is, this is where it's at. I'm gonna just line the lips here. I apologize, you guys. I'm just fumbling today. I'm going to do a little Huda Beauty Bust Out Bombshell. This is my favorite liquid lip. I haven't tried a lot, so I can't really say that. Um, basically, um, I tried Anastasia's back in the day. Liked them, didn't love them. Tried the Huda ones. It was a game changer for me, and I just haven't tried any other ones since. Um, but I will say in my Sephora shipment, I do have one coming in from NARS that I've been wanting to try out, so... We'll see how that one goes. All right, when I apply it, I just apply to the middle of the bottom lip first to get any excess amount off there. And then I go to the corners. Same on the other side. And then we just fill it in. I do a little blot to transfer it. Same thing, corner, corner, fill it in, bada bing, super easy, natural look. All right.
this is the look. I'll show you guys in better lighting um, when I head out to Starbucks. But right now I need to go do my hair because it's looking crazy. All right, so here is the outfit of the day. I just have on this gray sweater that I picked up at Kohl's. I want to say it was like 10 bucks, but I absolutely loved it because it has like the little thumb holes and it's so comfy cozy. Picked it up in a size medium because I wanted it to be a little bit chunkier, but I think I could have sized down in it. If I don't fold it over, it's kind of chunky. So, um, and then I just have on my basic rag and bone jeans and some white vans and that's it that's how we're uh that's how we're rolling for today so okay so here is the finished makeup look you can see it's super natural easy everyday wear i'm absolutely obsessed with it it's my go-to lately um and now i think we're going to starbucks are we going to starbucks yeah and i'm on my switch all right there we have it headed to starbucks well, that was an adventure. The Starbucks issue. The issue, Starbucks we usually go to was closed, so we went to the Starbucks on the Target back there, and that took like forever for them to get our food ready. It did. What did you get? You tell. What, what did you get? You tell. All right. Well, Phoenix got a snow snowman cake pop and a hot chocolate, and then... I wanted to try, and it was uh, it was recommended to try the eggnog latte, which I am a huge fan of eggnog. But on top of all of the Starbucks being closed, with the exception of the one in the Target, um, they did not have the eggnog latte available. So I went with my classic. My favorite holiday drink is their chestnut praline latte. Normally I get it hot, but I thought I would do an iced one today which I don't know why, because today's been the coldest day of all days, but we'll see. I definitely prefer it hot over iced, but it's all good. All right, Starbucks is done. And we'll check back in in a little bit. All right, I thought I would just show you guys my Christmas decorations, so... I honestly, the last couple of years have done my tree in all red and silver, but this year because of the couch, um, I added in some green to kind of pull that through. So a lot of the ornaments on here are just very basic red and green ones that I picked up at um, Hobby Lobby. And then we also have some little traditional ornaments in here like the Santa and this little Noel one that kind of just pulls through some nice little pieces and then I just wrapped this burlap around two sections of the tree. This burlap I picked up at Hobby Lobby as well and then my favorite piece of the tree are these little berries that I stick throughout and those were also picked up at Hobby Lobby. The tree is obviously a fake tree. I'm absolutely obsessed with it. We picked it up a couple years ago and I just think it's a really, really beautiful tree. I love it lit up. And, you know, I don't put a whole lot of ornaments on it because I think the tree is so beautiful itself that I don't feel like it needs a whole lot to really be a stunning piece in any house. Now for the fireplace section, this sign up here, this Merry Christmas one, I picked up at Hobby Lobby. I'm missing a candle over here and it's because we had no power for two days and I actually used it, but picture a candle on that other little piece right here. This garland I picked up at Home Depot. And then what I did was I went to Hobby Lobby and picked up these little accent pieces. So the big berries, these little pine cones, and I just stuck them in there really, really pretty. And what I love about this garland in particular is that it does, it does light up. So it gives off a whole vibe. Down below these stockings are from Target. And then we have in this corner over here, these different types of trees. 
they were all picked up at Hobby Lobby and I loved the idea of having something that was a mix of rustic with like that big tall brown one and then this stick one right here and then something more modern which is where that green one comes in and these glitter pieces. So I'm absolutely obsessed with the look of this from where I sit on the couch. Like how stunning is that? And then for the lovely couch itself, I was super nervous about pulling the red on it. And on camera, this is coming out more blue, but it is like a peacock green. And all I did was I pulled our red Christmas pillows out, left the gray ones, and then we have this Laugh Play Jingle All The Way pillow. Those all came from Home Goods last year. But I think that the red actually does, don't mind the mess of my Christmas wrapping shenanigans over there in the corner, but I think the red actually pulls through pretty nicely. So for the area between our entryway and the dining room, I did a simple little setup and I picked up this joyful sign at Hobby Lobby. And then down below we have a, a garland that runs across. That garland came like that. I picked that up at Home Depot last year. Um, we have the little lantern over on this side. That lantern lights up. It ends up being super, super pretty at night um, with all of those little pieces. So I love this little area. I think it's really cute. And then lastly, we have the dining table. So all I did was I added a runner, which I picked up at Home Goods. I think this runner is really cute. It has the little reindeer. And then at the end, you have Santa in his sleigh. And then this centerpiece we put together last year. So I believe we got all of the items at Michael's. So this is just like a, a little glass bowl. And then we just put a candle in the middle and then we wrapped some berries. Um, these were loose berries and we just wrapped it around and put this little centerpiece together. And then we have these salt and pepper shakers, which I got as a white elephant gift last year. I just thought they were so cute. So we are leaving them out to shine um, right here. So that is it for the table. And I just love this whole look. It's such a vibe. The last little area that I decorated is in the kitchen and I had these cute little joy trees. It's a set of three and they just spell out joy. I think they're so adorable. Last year when we were in the apartment, I had them in the window as you come up. Wasn't sure where to put them this year, but I ended up putting them on the island and I just think that they're really cute right there. And then I just added in the back on the stove um, a little dish towel and that's it. All right, so it is actually now Saturday. Uh, yesterday got away from me. I didn't do a Target run. My Sephora order did not come in. I thought it was supposed to come in yesterday, um, but it's actually not due in until this next Friday. So I didn't do that. Um, and then my best friend called me probably around like 5.30 yesterday and said she needed to run to Hobby Lobby. And when your best friend calls and says Hobby Lobby, you meet her over there. So. That's what I ended up doing last night. This morning I woke up, I did do my Target run, and then my sister-in-law is so adorable, she brought me a eggnog latte from Starbucks because I wasn't able to try it yesterday. And I have to say, it's delicious. I would be curious to try the hot version of it because I do think that there is a difference, at least as far as like the chestnut praline latte goes it's definitely better hot than it is iced um, but this is delicious and I thought it was like the sweetest thing ever and it was exactly what I needed so I'm gonna wrap up this video I've got a couple of gifts to wrap and stick under the tree and then I will see you guys in the next one thanks for hanging out I'll see you guys soon bye